Hello, good evening. All military and civilian flights have been grounded as a volcanic ash cloud drifts over Britain, forcing the closure of UK airspace. The ash cloud has come from an eruption under a glacier in Iceland and could take days to disperse. But today's unprecedented move has not stopped search and rescue services. In a moment, we'll be getting the latest from Tim Cooper in Afghanistan on how flights have been affected there. But first, Martin Lowe has this report. As the skies fell silent, one of the very few aircraft flying in the UK today, a Royal Navy Sea King carries out a medical emergency mission. The search and rescue craft from HMS Gannett at Prestwick in Scotland transferred a critically ill woman from Dunfermline to London. A call for help was made after civilian flights were grounded when a huge cloud of volcanic ash billowed into Scottish airspace after an eruption in Iceland. The cloud was carried in a south-easterly direction by the jet stream and will continue to threaten flights around Britain. The Navy helicopter landed at Regent's Park in London where the patient was transferred to an ambulance for the onward journey to hospital. The aircraft that we fly are fitted with fan filters to remove particulates before the air gets to the engines. And of course, quite a few of our pilots have had experience of flying now in a uh, uh, dusty and sandy climate. Also in the air today, an RAF transport plane bringing home the body of a soldier killed in Afghanistan. Its arrival at RAF Lynham brought forward to allow it to land ahead of the advancing ash cloud. But these were very much the exceptions. The RAF says it remains operational, ready to scramble in the event of threat or emergency. But routine transport and training flights anywhere in the vicinity of the ash cloud have been grounded. Volcanic ash is one of the most serious problems aviation faces. In 1982, an eruption near Jakarta threw millions of tonnes of ash into the sky. A British Airways jet lost all four engines after they were clogged with the debris. The pilot, Eric Moody, was widely praised after finally managing to restart three and land safely. As the ash cloud spread southwards across the UK, one by one airports were closed, first in Scotland and Northern Ireland, but by midday civilian flights across the whole of the UK and much of Northern Europe had been grounded. Hundreds of thousands of passengers were left stranded by cancellations. The air bridge between the UK and operations in Afghanistan has also been hit. Military personnel have been told that flights back and forth are on hold. It'll mean delays for servicemen and women waiting to leave theatre. One flight had passed Cyprus but was turned back. Flights were also being halted at Exercise Joint Warrior off the Scottish coast, where aircraft were due to have been flying on and off aircraft carriers. Martin Lowe, Forces News. Well, let's cross to Afghanistan now. And British Forces reporter Tim Cooper. Tim, what more can you tell us? Kate, this is already starting to affect personnel trying to head home from Afghanistan. The MOD in London have told us that a flight from here via RAF Akrotiri in Cyprus was told to turn around just before it was due to land at RAF Bryce Norton in Oxfordshire. It is now back in Cyprus. Well, in the last few minutes, we've had a statement through from a spokesman for Task Force Helmand. In it, he says that military flights into Bryce Norton will be subject to the same safety restrictions as any other flights into Afghanistan and out of the UK. The current airport closures have not affected scheduled flights to Afghanistan today, but there will be some disruption to flights leaving the country. So in practical terms, this is likely to mean that if you're planning to leave Afghanistan, your travel plans will be disrupted. But I'm told that if you're scheduled to do decompression at somewhere like Cyprus, the chance is your flights will fly. Now, of course, this is a very difficult time for the aircraft handlers and planners here in Afghanistan. It's come completely out of the blue. And they are trying their hardest to maintain as normal a service as possible without, of course, that crucial link back to the UK. Now, if this continues, it could have consequences. Perhaps aeroplanes in the wrong place at the wrong time may be leading to further delays and or cancellations. At this stage, possibly the best advice is that if you're planning to leave Afghanistan any time soon, check in for your flight as scheduled for the latest information. All right, Tim Cooper, thank you.